going everybody rainy Sunday here in Nashville um, let's see um, just sitting down warming up figuring out how to um, I don't know come up with something creative today um, I've got this uh, a little bit of warble going on in this sound kind of like a vinyl record it's an old uh, guillotine, guillotine pedal that does it. Um, anyway, hope everybody's doing good. And um, man, it's been lots of views on that last video, which is awesome. Thanks everyone for tuning, tuning in. I know I took a few weeks off, so it's great to see people coming back. Um, you know, my main disclaimer is I, I don't feel like I'm much of a teacher as far as being able to explain a lot of what I do, but um, I'm just kind of enjoy this more for um, creating the community and conversations about music and things. Um, so, you know, that's my disclaimer. Because <laughs> I don't have the knowledge, theory knowledge that, you know, a lot of other teachers and people do, which you can get anywhere. I mean, Uncle Larry is a great example of someone that knows how to explain all of this shit. I don't have that knowledge, but, um, but I like playing and I like talking about it with you guys. So, um, I'm just going to explain a little bit about what I like to do sometimes, something that's fun to do to get the juices flowing, um, which is holding down just a fundamental root. You know, it's like, a, I think of it like, you know, melodic blues or something, or like, you know, trying to find those chords inside of the, the thread, the common thread, which is over E. Um, I'll show you these basic chord shapes I'm using. So this is your, I'm thinking of uh, E, E over D, just, just mo moving that shape down two frets, and then down to an A chord. And I'm playing these with, uh, I'm playing them kind of like, I'm thinking of it, thinking of it like piano blocking.
that one is uh, G. Just take your E shape, move it up. You still got E in the bass. F sharp minor. And all these moves can happen real quick. You just kind of think of them like passing, passing chords. You know, you don't want to hang around on them too long. Things like that, you know, and then you want to, when you're coming up with your little lines and riffs in between, just always be aware that you're still pocketing that rhythm, you know, because that's everything. Just want that to always be feeling good. And then you can push the time around a bit, either side of that, you know. That kind of thing. Sometimes that's a fun way to start the day. That's all I'm saying is, uh, you know, get wake your mind up a bit, get it going. Um, coffee helps too. <laughs> this is a coffee cup from when my wife and I got married. Yeah, isn't that sweet? I talked to Drew about doing coffee cups and he said they're a real pain in the ass to ship. Um, a lot of breakage and, you know, expensive to ship them. So we might put that on hold for a minute unless someone comes up with a better solution. Um, you know, I don't know. If you're anything like me, I like to have my coffee out of a good big, not too wide a mouth mug. Ones are too wide to pain in the ass. Spill everywhere. This is the perfect size. In my humble opinion. Um, um, let's see. What else? Um, that's about it from me today. Um, I got this cool strat I've been plunking around on. Isn't that great color? I don't know if I can buy it, but man, it's cool. I always look for, um, a, like in a strat in particular, I haven't set the bar up on this one, but um, I always like to make sure the, or I always like a sound that is clear but has a color and character you know what i mean like you can find hi-fi pickups and things that are like really clear and beautifully built and have all this stuff scooped out that makes it speak um which is awesome but like if it doesn't have a character or a color um i feel like that stuff becomes uninspiring really quickly so I always try to find a balance between something that cuts and is clear, but also has a personality. These are pretty good pickups. These are old pickups. I think these are, this is a 65 um, pickup harness, and this is a 66 neck on a newer body. So it's a cool kind of players. Still expensive, as everything remotely vintage is nowadays but you know but it's a good deal compared to an old original one
balance pickups. Um, you guys ever find yourselves leaning into sounds that you used to real that used to really bug you when you were starting out playing or anything? Man, when I was a kid, I used to hate the middle pickup sound on a Telecaster with the two pickups on, you know? I used to think it was the most useless, doinky sound. I always thought, like, the bridge pickup sound is like, that's all you want. Um, and I never really liked the neck pickup either. It's funny, Book and I have joked about this, because when he was a kid, he always loved the neck pickup sound, and I always loved the bridge pickup sound. Um, and now a few years down the road, I really love that middle pickup sound on a telly and the neck pickup. I like, I love it. It's, I lean into it way more probably than I even do a bridge pickup anymore. Much as I love a good, you know, like rock and bridge pickup sound. Um, same with the Strat, the middle pickup sound. I don't much go for the outer phase sounds, but like the three way on a Strat is perfect to me, three way switch. Um, I love the middle pickup sound now. I used to used to piss me off. I used to hate it. I used to think it was so doinky and weak. And now I love it. Especially a good fat one, you know. studio with Vince, I found myself leaning into those middle positions more for rhythm sounds, you know, because, um, you know, I want to hear Vince Gill play guitar solos. I don't want to hear myself play them, especially on his records. So, you know, trying to come up with rhythm sounds that are supportive and imagining what he's going to come back and play, um, you know, is something I feel like we're all very aware of when we're in there playing with him. Uh, anyway, I hope everybody's doing good and enjoying your weekend, and um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Happy picking.